and welcome once again to Living in the 21st Century. Joining me this morning is Pastor Audrey Hudson, um, pastor and founder of AOH Ministries. Uh, my brother, it's good to have you on this morning again. God bless you. It's good to be on, Brother Era. Thank God for those of you. Thank God for you and all of you this morning. Bless the Lord. You know, um, one thing we'd like to discuss this morning um, is truth versus lies, what now becoming the norm and the most acceptable thing. Um, lies, people, people prefer to hear more lies and it's more accepted in our society than the truth. So if you're telling the truth, you are a liar. And if you're telling lies, um, that's the acceptable thing. That sounds more like the truth. It's all shifted around. And secondly, we want to look at this territorial, dictatorial spirit that um, you can see both from a micro level in society and at a broader level. It creeps in your communities where um, this controlling spirit wants to control everything. It goes as far as government uh, locally, where they want to run and do things. And even though if it has um, dictatorial principles inside of it, even though we are a democratic um, society, it seems like that's the route to go and you've got prominent politicians following that avenue. Um, and you go as far as then from an international level, we saw over the past six, eight years where um, politicians don't want to concede when they lost um, their seat. They want to continue to run and pretend that they are still in power and do whatever it can take to destroy the uh, competitors. When we have this in society, it's, uh, it's creating a pattern to, for lies to become acceptable. And the more and more repetitively it becomes, the more and more acceptable it becomes in the eyes of the younger generation and even generations to come. All forgetting about the democratic principles and standards in society. And that, that in itself, I think, is something that God himself wouldn't be pleased with because we know God gave us that spirit of freedom. Um, even when the, Egypt, when the Israelites were up to Egypt under Pharaoh's captivity, uh, God would send both Moses and Aaron up there to, uh, to speak to uh, Pharaoh to let his people go. And they were under bondage, they were under lies, they were under slavery, and so forth. Uh, what is your intake on that for this time and season, even right here starting from America? Thank you, Brother Arrow. Again, it's so, such a pleasure to be on with you. And I want to sure. say that uh, uh, you know, I'm kind of a little indisposed, but I thank God that I'm on, I'm on daddy and father duty this morning, helping my wife with a special project that uh, yes. uh, she's doing. And sometimes, you know, that's, that's a part of it. But I want to tell you what the word of God says. And I think it encapsulizes both parts of what you're asking about the lies, but then mm -hmm. the narcissistic nature yes. of, of much of what is uh, encapsulized our uh, uh, society. The Bible declares that in the last days, men will become lovers of themselves. Yes. Rather to believe a lie than the truth. The ironic thing is, Brother Error, you know, people have itching ears now and they want to be told these lies. Now, it's sad, but that's just true. People, we're coming into a society where uh, society is blurring the lines of what reality is and what fact is based off what people are saying they're wanting. And so what that does is, you know, uh, uh, used to be a time that, you know, uh, um, male was a male, a female was a female, but because of the wants of people, now lines are being blurred. And so it, 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 it's, 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 we, are, we are encapsulizing and we are allowing the other bubble, again, I say other, the, allowing the other bubble to be more used than one of the other. In addition, it's kind of like you say with, with people, people because, you know, you know, people, people love themselves. They love their ability. They love what they feel like their reality is. And so it bleeds over into politics. It bleeds over into every aspect 
or every part of our society. So what happens is that you have people who say, I'm not leaving or they're not going to accept the accept the results of the election. And what they do is they'll put out these false statements, these lies, because there are a base of people who want that. And what we have to do as believers is be careful that, you know, uh, uh, um, that, that we understand what is a fact and we understand what is a truth regardless of whether we like it or not. And that's something that we have to practice. That's something that we have the principles that we have to put in place. You know, my son is three years old and many times, you know, he does not like reality. He does not like the fact that he may have to transition from one thing to the other. One thing his mother and I are firm on, you know, sometimes you, you may not like the next move or you may not like the transition, but it is a part of life. Transition is a part of life. Moving from one thing to the next is a part of life. Losing election is a part of life. Uh, uh, it, it is it is just a reality. And I think that that's the thing that one of the things as an educator, I work in the school system. And one of the things that we're seeing a big problem with with our students or with our children, they don't know how to re accept reality. I don't know if it's the society or it's social media or whatever it is, is that or if it's parenting styles is literally that they don't really know how to accept reality and what it is are facts. You know, they, they have these rose colored glasses on uh, and, and this rose colored perspective of things. And what it does is it bleeds and blurs over everything. And, you know, the reality of it is we continue if we continue to move the goalposts. I don't think we'll ever get a concrete answer or we'll, we won't ever get uh, foundational principles or reality. Is. You know, some things are right. Some things are wrong. Some things are black. Some things are white. Some things, uh, some are male and some are female. But what happens is this when we begin to blur the lines and we start flowing to the temperament or what people want, then I think our society is going to continue to be messed up, sir. Absolutely. One of the things that I'm concerned about is that you're a young man or a young woman starting a family. You have young kids growing up in your home. And there you have the crooked, lying politician That's in right. whom the, your mom or dad probably would have voted for. And you're a child trying to articulate what um, is right from wrong. You're hearing lies, and lies become acceptable. Your mom, your same mom that is walking two streets at the same time that vote for the same politician is trying to bring you up as a good child or trying to teach you godly principles. But the reality is that you are not doing the same thing that you want to teach your kids. And your kids, <laughs> kids are, <laughs> your kids are at an observational standpoint. But to say, wait a minute, my mom is telling me don't tell lies or my mom is telling me do this and do that. But then how come she vote for that person or how yeah. come she I see I, I with that person, even though he's fit? And you know yeah. for a fact that children are very analytical in everything they do. Mm. And uh, that's what I'm concerned about because we could be very well be rearing a, a young generation to be established upon the foundation of lies and self-denial to the oh, truth. Yeah. And then when that happens, what kind of a world would we have then? Would Christianity be the next thing that would be molded and carved under a, a foundation of denial and the true and living God may be just an old ancient biblical story like um, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Clay or some, some old ancient fairy tale story that yes. no, kids no longer have the understanding of fearing God or who really who God's supposed to be. That we are only thought that we come from mommy and daddy, we grow to a certain age and then we leave the earth and that's what it's all about. Um, those are the things that we would like to speak to for this time and season. I, you know, I think what you're saying is so important. It's so it's so paramount, you know, as, as parents, as the first religious leaders in our home mm -hmm. as the first teachers in our home want to model the example that we want our children to follow we want to be a tupas a modeling example but the reality of it is is like you say these people that you know lead our country you know and i'm gonna be honest mr air i'm gonna say something that's gonna be true and that a lot of people do not like mm -hmm. 
because the truth is an offense. Amen. You're picking, you're picking the lesser of two evils, especially as we talk about our uh, political uh, system as it relates to picking a president. I don't care who you are, Democrat or Republican. Yes. Make no mistake, you're picking the lesser of two evils. Yes, it absolutely. Is what it is. Yes. And, and, and that lesser of two evils is based off your perspective, based off your opinion and what you feel. And you have to vote your conscience. And in my case, I vote the conscience of what the Holy Spirit directs me to do. Yes. You're talking about the lesser of two evils. Because make no mistake, there's good and bad yes. on both sides. Absolutely. And the reality of it is, like you said, but as a, as a father, I'm looking at the candidate who has the best moral record of what we see. And make no mistake, I say, of what we see. Yes. Because yes. nobody knows these people behind closed doors. None of us know that. None of the American public know that. We know what face they yes. present on TV. And so what I'm saying is one thing I do know is that, is that the person who uh, seems to be pushing the most lies, the, the, the propaganda, are the people who these falsehoods. And, 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 as, and I, if I'm getting you correctly, I can't tell my son not to be a liar or to be trustworthy and to be truthful, but then turn around, I pick a person who's who doesn't have good moral character, who uh, 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 does not have good uh, racial history of, of, of character, who, who's a chauvinist, who does not treat women with respect. That's just being real. You know, and I'm saying that on an honest level that the reality of it is one of the things that, because I'm an example, I don't model for my son what I'm telling him, don't do as I do, do as I say. No, I'm telling them, do as daddy does. And I think that that is the reality of what we have to be as a society, that if we want the world to respect us, but our, also our children, what we have to do is put the example of what we want out there. And sometimes what we have is, and I'm just going to be honest, these Christian evangelicals, uh, which I am a part of, mm -hmm. who will say, yeah, I see what the man says and I see what he does, but that, you know, that has nothing to do with his politics. That's not true. And I'm just being real. I think that's, uh, absolutely. I think that's loaded. Mm -hmm. I think the thing of it is that we have to be realistic Yes. and say, hey, at some particular point, we have to take a person at face value. They tell yes. you they're going to be a dictator on day one. I'm yes. just being done. You have to take it for face value, not for what you want to hear them say. You have to take it for what they are saying. Absolutely. I, I agree. And, and this, this is the thing that I'm getting at. I was taught as a kid growing up that honesty is the best policy. That's right. And I just like what you touched here about evangelicals. So a guy told you that he's going to be a dictator from day one. He's speaking from his heart. That's he right. He ain't leaving you to be surprised of what his intentions are. That's and so we that's have a nation, or half the nation actually, who religiously follow this guy that he can even make Bibles in his name, right? And have them sold like crazy. That's right. Uh, and this is the thing that beat me because he is now setting himself up as a God. Yeah. Not just a dictator, but a God. When this is inculcated in your fam young children's brain, it doesn't matter how much we try to educate them and bring them up in, in the rights of God and teach the godly principles. They're going to say this is Trump principles. This has nothing to do with Jehovah God anymore. No. And when Trump principles now vary off into dictatorship style, something that God don't like, by the way, um, where he enslaved people mentally and you have to bond to a specific rule and how you go about your daily living. This is terrible. God, God who the spirit set free is free indeed. And not That's only right. the truth set you free, right? But when you are in an environment that are dictatorially claustrophobic, how could we really nourish and bring up a child to know right from wrong in the presence of God. It doesn't matter what we say to that child. When he step out the boundaries of your house, he's either going to be encapsul encapsulated mentally, born to his mother and father's principles of God, or when he gets outside or she gets outside, they have to step out the boundaries of what they were taught from mommy and daddy. And we know for biblical fact, you can't have one foot in, I want for oh, you're either hot or you're either cold. Either cold. This, 
This is a spiritual traumatic dark force and season that I think our younger generation is um, growing in. I am not saying it happened yet, but eventually it's going to happen one way or the other. I think these are things that God has called us to look out for in the last days and time and seasons. This exactly. Antichrist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is exactly what you say. Exactly that word that it is Antichrist because it is idolatry. And, and literally, we, we have to call a spade a spade. It is idolatry. It is the cult of personality. It is the cult of person. And what happens is this, no matter what, the man declared that he could shoot somebody in the middle of Times Square and that he would still be elected. And there are entities and there are people who would still literally vote for a person who was uh, uh, falsely accused, who have all these felony counts. And, and one of the things that to me, that is a true that 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 is it's a clear distinction of the have and the have nots. Those uh, because if you or I had as many felonies, uh, uh, we would, would not be eligible to vote. It's just a distinction that we have to call a spade a spade and look at it for what Absolutely. it is. You know, because it's just true. But it is this idolatry and it is setting us up. Even if not now, I'm not saying that Trump is. I'm not saying that Kamala Harris is. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that. The Antichrist, we do know is coming, and this is a prerequisite to setting yes. us up for the Antichrist to come. It is idolatry. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, this, going back to this stage, I like that portion you just mentioned, that he can stand and shoot a person, and he would not, I mean, how confident are you to tell a whole nation That's right. of academics, um, intelligent people that you can shoot someone and get with it and the more you think about it it seems like reality because under no normal circumstances a person like you or myself as a president could do the things he did or inspire the people to do the things he did on that day of the insurrection and get with it it's like that's right every month we was to hear that there's a sentence in date it moved from, it was to be in July, I think it was, or something. Not moved to September. What else? I mean, when you will say to a person that because you may be a billionaire, and the reality, a billionaire by robbing people, by the way. That's right. And you, <laughs> because of your money, and, and he said it with his own mouth, he have a lot of those politicians in his pocket. I can remember That's very right. well the first thing he said he was going to run. He gave Hillary Clinton over a million dollars for her to come to his, one of his family members' wedding or something like that. And this is outrageous, right? Yes. So that's why none of them can't hold their mouth up and speak the reality when it comes to him and have to keep deep, deep throat. When you have a person like that, it takes me back to the time of Adolf Hitler. He was a yes. pure con artist, right? Yes, he was. And, yes. and this is what Trump is shaping to be. And that's, as a matter of fact, that's what he is, a con artist. Yes. These are serious people to put in power. You can't be a person called yourself a Christian or a representative of God and have a man like Trump leading your country. That's right. Are you a Christian? Come on now, are you yeah. reading the Bible upside down? <laughs> and, and some of them are. And see, what they're doing is taking the scripture to make it what they want it to be. The reality of it is that we're talking about morality and we're talking about the, the genuineness of who God is and who Christ is. You got to understand that the leader, this has to be in you. You know, the Bible said, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. And Amen. we're supposed to take on the mind of Christ. We have to be honest with ourselves, and though I'm an evangelical, though I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and though, if I'm honest, many yes. of the Republican principles align directly with my lifestyle in particular as it relates to uh, uh, the rights of, 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 uh, 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 of babies and fetuses. And I, if I'm being honest, I have to say that my, my lifestyle and morals more align, but as it relates to the person that they have chosen to be their candidate, we are as far as night and day. And you have to be honest as it relates to the morality of this person because it is not just there. It is, it, it, it is not. And so, 
you know, the Bible said Mark the perfect man. And what I'm saying to you, if evangelicals, if, if if you want to put God at the first forefront, you have to, it has to be God and not this person. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, but the bad truth of it is in this country, evangelicals are lifting up Trump. And that is an issue that I believe God has a problem with. I believe that that is an issue for us as a nation because it's not lifting up this individual. This person is not the savior. There is or no woman is the savior. The only savior for this country and what we're going to get through is Jesus Christ. Not Amen. Trump, not Kamala Harris, not the Republicans and not the Democrats. It is only Jesus Christ. A big amen to that. You know, um, one, one of the things I, I, again, I don't like is when people or when presidents trying to take that position of God. And I'm going to speak to this because every single individual has to give accountability for himself or herself right. to God. Not me for you and you for me. Every man has to do that on their own. Now, I am pro-life, 100%. I believe in the preservation and the integrity of life in a woman's womb, all right? And it's God who made us and not we ourselves. But I believe that that woman has the right to answer to God, not you or not me. I That's should right. not be making decisions on that woman to say, well, look, That's right. we're going to ban abortions across um, this nation. And the reality is that when a woman has a fetus in her that had died, she can't go and have it taken out. So she become contaminated That's and right. she's susceptible to set it and she passed and died also. Then you destroy the elements of Planned Parenthood and they make it seem or appear that all women that try to abort a child was doing it because they don't want to have a baby yet or they can't support that child. And there's several more, there are several other different things that is that Planned Parenthood is there for than just aborting children. Or doctors are there for just aborting children. They are there for their own gynecological reasons that go beyond abortion. This, That's right. when you shut down that system for women, you are actually taking away all the privileges that they would have worked for over the years to become in a position to vote, to have the rights to vote in this country. Then you That's rip right. that right away indirectly from out of their hand. They can vote, but then what? So, so I'm saying that for this time of season, I think all women, and I, I thank God for speaking to me because I come from a, a, a mom who had to be um, raising six children on her own and so forth. And yeah, I, I understand all of that. But at the same very time, it's God who created us and not we ourselves. That's and right. He will always provide a way out for those parents who are playing mom and dad at the same time, or dad and mom at the same time. He will always provide a way out. Keep the baby when, when you have to. But to just rip that away from women, knowing that it's more than just aborting a child, and sometimes removing that child is to save the woman's life, dead or alive, whatever the case may be, that should not be the case for man to pass that judgment. You know, I'm going to add this part to what you said so beautifully and eloquently. God is sovereign, omniscient, Amen. omnipresent, all-powerful. He has the power to make us do whatever yes. it is that he wants us to do, but he doesn't. God gives us free will. Yes. Now, a lot of people don't want that. They don't like that. But he has the power. He can make you live holy. He can make you love him. He can make you live a righteous life. But he doesn't. He gives us free will. Why does he give us free will? Because God wants our choice. He wants yes. you to choose him. So he says, I have set before you life and death. Choose ye life. He makes us, he gives us the ability to have choice. He doesn't make us choose anything. And I think what happens is this, when we as a society make people or, or take away the choice, then we're doing something, like you said, playing God. And we that that's not something that we should do. That's not something that we have the right to do. If God doesn't do that, if he doesn't force us, Jesus Christ died for people who would never love him, who would that's never right. give them his, their life. But the reality, he died for the just as well as the unjust, because he says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Uh, Many absolutely. times when we take away the person's choice, we take, take away their liberty to know God in freedom. And I think that that's what we have to go back to as a society. No, don't make people. You got a choice. You know, he doesn't. God, I don't say this. 
for the people in the bank. God doesn't send people to hell. He created hell, not yes. for us, but for Satan and his enemies. That's right. But if you choose to go to hell, he loves you enough to let you go. God is a God of free will. He is a Amen. God of choice. Amen. Well, Pastor, we're coming to the um, last couple of minutes. So, you know, I'll give you that final word to uh, educate the public to what they need to know for this time and season and even voting um, for the next couple of months to come. Thank you so much, Brother Eric. Again, it's been a pleasure. I want to tell you this, that you have to vote the conscience of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to rest in you. Take the Holy Spirit into the ballot box with you. I said again, take him with you. The Bible says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path, even as it relates to who you're voting for. So take him with you. Don't leave him at home. Don't leave him in the car. Take him in and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, you guide my hand. Holy Spirit, you guide my tongue. Holy Spirit, you guide my mind about the person that you want to lead this country. And we understand that God will do that, that he's working even right now on the behalf of the believers. We know that some things must come, that they must come to pass, but it's not for us to be afraid because all things are working together for our good, the good of them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. I want you to know if you're living on purpose, God has your back, that he is with you and that he's in you. I don't care who the president is, Jesus is still king. He still rules and super rules, and that's what my faith and my hope and my confidence is. I will encourage you to join me and come go with me to the land of more because Jesus is king over there, and no matter what it is, he's still.